Hey, everyone, it is interview time with the wonderful, amazing, incredible repeat guest, Reed Mihalko, who was our very first guest ever on really? Shameless Sex. Yep. Yes, Ep- you what? were. Episode five, Casual like Sex. We were in the Caribbean. The yeah. sound, forgive us about the sound. If you go back to it, everyone, we were it five deep. Up. We were five deep you in that podcast fine, game. Not us. Yeah, that you're, was you're like your awesome. first guest ever, episode five. How does that make so, sense? So we originally designed the podcast to be mostly us and only a guest oh. once a month. And we then it, it to be switched. conversational with her and I, like letting people into our sexy time stories mm-hmm. and relationship trials yeah. and tribulations. Okay. It turns out guests were you know a bit better well then we got a whole bunch of guests wanting to come on our show and then it became like there's so many guests and there's it's it's just we i mean we are booked out for recordings for the next couple of months because there's so many people that we yeah, want we to have only on our show for, for a couple country. of months too yeah if we, but if we wanted to we could book out the whole year but yeah he was only to wow. do but about, we like, say that often months. about you. We're like, you're our very first guest on our show, episode number five. So y'all, if you want to go back in time and listen to our sound quality then, and then you can compare it to n- now, you'll be grateful for now. And <laughs> and, and then yes. people can judge that that first threesome. And now I'm just sloppy I, 50 seconds or something like that, whatever. Oh, uh, But right. now we got it dialed in though. Now we're like, we, we understand the, each other. Also, the thing about Reed is you don't age. You're like, <laughs> I feel like you're in a bubble. You've looked the same for like 20 years. This is I, <laughs> Yeah, I generated. It's been like that. It's not real. I, I'm basically the Max Headrome for anyone who gets that reference. Uh, thank you. Um, the Max Headrome of sex education is really yes, now. yes, uh, the, yes. He just he just keeps on going as the wonderful Read Me Hako has an age of change a day. He gains more knowledge every yeah. day, though. His head That's gets that. better with knowledge. Yes, and, and yeah, exactly. April, you're very kind to to say that I'm not aging. And, and I only one day, say things I mean. Either you got it, a good filter or you just look good. It, at one point, it'll be like I'll just go rob it. Redford. I was good looking, good looking, good looking. And then it's old Robert Redford. <laughs> You'll just wake up like really shri- like shriveled, like shriveled, yep. like a like a prune. Yeah, then you're ready silver to... fox. Yeah. Yeah. Silver fox. Yeah. I like hey. some wrinkles. Yeah. I like and I like the silver too. So mm-hmm. all right. So we're not here to talk about silver fox or Robert Redford, everyone. We are here to talk about sexy play parties. We're not, and I'm out of this uh, podcast. Oh, April's That's sleeping. what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> and something called the birthday club. What's birthday the birthday club? club? But it has something to do with something kind of sexy. So before mm-hmm. we dive into the birthday club, read, even though everyone probably has uh listened to the intro on this episode and maybe listened to past episodes with you since you've been on our show at least two to three times. Can you please remind us how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Um, well, thank you. It's lovely to be on your podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, the quick like X-Men origin story for me is my mom and dad loved each other very, very much. They shared that special hug four times. <laughs> so and <special. laughs> my siblings and I grew up watching two people who were madly in love, making out in the kitchen all the time, cuddling on the couch. They were really good parents early on. We watched two people who were madly in love slowly grow more and more mad at each other to the extent where my mom would start self-medicating with alcohol. She became an alcoholic. My dad was that generation of of American man who's like the woman that he, he loved was unhappy. It must mean we don't have enough wealth. He became a workaholic. Mm. And growing up in New England just kind of like that New England ability, that superpower to never talk about the elephant in the room ever and ignore it. Their inability to communicate just basically scarred them and their marriage. And it trickled down on on my siblings and I. And I had a really great example of two people who loved each other very much, not being able to have a healthy relationship. And so I unintentionally at first sought out like, like, what is my mom and dad missing? Because their relationship sucks, even though they they loved each other until my mom passed away first. And then that trajectory um, would lead me to trying to figure out, like, how do we have healthy relationships? Like, why isn't love enough? And then becoming really good at communicating and understanding what makes a relationship healthy, which also when you go down that rabbit hole, sex is a part of that. I then had my little sexual renaissance in college and after in New York City in the 90s, being a bartender and having like permission to have like conversations with everybody at the bar about their sex life, their dating life. And it was just me doing all this field work and then also discovering promiscuity and like, how do you leave the campsite better than you found it if you're sleeping with a lot of people and all of that just kind of 
poured into making me this person. I used to be an actor a long time ago. And one day on a soap opera that I was on, all the producers who just happened to be women um, circled me on the uh, on the set. And they were like, I thought they were firing me. And they're like, Reed, we want to tell you something. I'm like, what? Am I fired? They're like, no, like you give really good relationship advice because we all have therapists and we've all come to you for dating advice. And we just want you to know that we think that you're better at this than some of our therapists. And we think you should consider that as a career. You're like, thank you for not putting me in a coma in a hospital and then slowly killing me off on the show. <laughs> I play way a female nurse, though, on another oh. world. So oh, like, there's okay. that. I, I do not play. I've never played an, a, a doctor on TV, but I did play an Eva Mill nurse. And and it took me another two years to get the courage to actually consider doing like relationship advice. And now I have the privilege of helping people not do to each other what I saw my mom and dad do to each other and go through. And, you know, I also discovered that I'm queer, I'm polyamorous, I'm a big old slut. And like, how do we do relationships, whatever your identity and, and sexual relationship style is like, how do you leave the campsite better than you found it? Fuck yeah, I walk through life like that. I've attended actually, I think two, maybe three of your workshops over the years. This is pre all of the the bullshit with uh, the pandemic. So when there were live workshops that weren't, you know, um, on mm -hmm. Zoom, this is like mm -hmm. at the one at the Pleasure Chest in LA. Yeah. And you were so good. I mean, it was a room full of people and you have a, a really... Uh, an extraordinary gift to deliver the messaging around sex and normalize things that a lot of like, you know, cis men, right? Because you're a cis man that, but I feel like you really do a great job of like being like, I'm queer. I've like the elevator speech. We we've used that, like that it's incredible. The things that you offer folks out there, I think the masses, and it speaks to a lot of different people, no matter your gender, right? It's uh, amazing. So I just wanted to, to, to lead with that. No. And thank you for and that. I have and, a question, and, but. and part of that is like the tools that help. So for folks who are listening, who are monogamous, you know, like, like the tools that my mom and dad needed as a monogamous couple to have a healthier relationship are the exact same tools you need to have if you're polyamorous, if you're a swinger, if you're kinky, if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're bi, if you're pan, like, like the actual things that allow for us to have healthy relationships. Those are the same whether you go to orgies or whether you just want to like have a, a conservative, whatever kind of relationship, pleasure and consent. And also like understanding trauma and how to be with people and understanding your own nervous system, like all of those things, all those tools. And I'm getting weird with analogies, but like a hammer and a, and a saw and a, and a screwdriver is like, those are the same tools you use to build a house or a bench or a whatever. And, but we don't grow up. So many of us having anyone show us what those tools were. And then we end up hurting each other and, and then thinking we're the ones who are broken. We're the ones who, who don't deserve love. And so it doesn't matter if you want to have a threesome, if you want to be spanked, or if you just want to be monogamous forever. Like, like it's all of these tools are so useful just to live a self-expressed life rather than one like filled with shame and you being so closed down or so afraid to ever ask your partner for what you would really like to, to explore in bed. Like all the, all the fears and the shame, that's what so many people are struggling with. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have in common. And, and then there's a weird American version, I think, <clears throat> of to be sexually evolved and actualized, you actually have to be into everything. Oh, God. And, and that's yeah. something that's that's fucking people over now is like, I'm broken because I'm not polyamorous, mm -hmm. because I don't like kink, because I can't squirt or have multiple orgasms, like somehow I'm broken. And I'm like, no, like what's evolved is that you give yourself permission to like what you like and don't like what you don't like. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of cool because you have the permission to be yourself. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's yeah. OK. okay. <laughs> so. um. Okay, so I have a question. Number one, I love some one of the workshops. You called yourself like a golden retriever or Labrador retriever or something, and I always like I was like that. Do you remember? I'm, do you I'm, remember? A, I'm a. I've been described as a golden retriever on yeah. espresso. 
Yeah. Yes. I love that <laughs> analogy of yourself. And I've thought about that. I was like, that's kind of ideal. I think I'm like a shih tzu. I'm like a palm shit, you know, like those Pomeranian shih tzu mixes that like, yeah, anyway, that's my, I, I don't know what they do, but I like Amy, it. what do you do then? What, how do you I'm identify? I'm thinking about it right now. I mean, my mind instantly goes to like my dog and what my dog is, which is a street rat, but I need to work on this one. So let me right. think about I'll it. Kind of, so I'll cut curly okay. hair. Like I'm not a poodle though. So no, yeah. no, you're like a, a Portuguese water dog. Yeah. Except yeah. Yeah, okay, tall anyways. and cool. And you shed a lot. So. Yeah, there you go. Um, so anyway, that's not my question. What is the birthday club? Okay, this sounds so much fun. And how did this birthday club come into fruition? Please tell our listeners. Okay, so the birthday club was an unintentional thing that kind of gained some momentum. And the origins of it are, I started when, when I figured out I was a slutty person who, and I needed play parties to really kind of explore and ask for what I wanted around sexuality. And so I've been running play parties since 1999. So New Year's Eve, 1999 into 2000. I, Y2K, we didn't die. Y2K. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I had a gathering of friends and it turned into an orgy. And I didn't, I, I didn't intend that to happen. And I was so afraid that all my friends were embarrassed or like ashamed that it turned into an orgy. But then the next day, all my friends were like, when's the next one? <laughs> and I'm like, we didn't even plan this one. Like you can't throw an unintentional orgy twice. Like, mm -hmm. how do we do this? So I started being a nerding out on, well, what, what do I need to feel safe to invite my friends who may not know each other to actually explore having an orgy? And that's what, that's kind of how my brain works and, and, and how, you know, I, parsed it out was, okay, we need to have a conversation in the beginning, which is the welcome circle. And then after the welcome circle, if, if anybody wants to leave early, you can leave early. But if you want to stay, then we start asking for what we want. And here's, you know, ask permission before you touch, get a verbal yes. You encourage people to change their minds. Here's where the condoms are and the lube and yada, yada, yada. Let's have a safer sex conversation, all of us. So that's how the play party started. What grew out of that was well, it's my birthday. Obviously, we're having a play party. But then that didn't feel edgy enough for me. So what my birthday turned into was me asking my friends for what I want to explore sexually that I might have shame around or be afraid they wouldn't love me anymore. So if I, if I ask for X, Y, and Z, you're not going to love me anymore. And that's what my birthday turned into was my homework, my birthday homework was to ask for something I thought my friends couldn't love me for. And then my friends every year would be like, we're doing your birthday again, right? You're going to ask for something you're ashamed about, right? They get really excited about it because I hang out with sex nerds and geeks. And so over the years, I keep throwing an orgy on my birthday. And I have asked for like, for me personally, scarier and scarier stuff. And my friends, because I'm I'm not kinky compared to my kinky friends, to my vanilla friends, I'm very kinky. But my, <laughs> my kinky friends are like, oh, that's sweet. You think you're kinky. That's, <laughs> not kinky. that's so cute. So I ask my friends like, hey, this is what I want to do. And I'm so scared because I still have a lot of sexual shame. I just don't let it hold me back from mm -hmm. speaking what I'm curious about exploring. And I'll ask and my friends are like, that's it. <laughs> that's what you want. That's what you're afraid we can't love you for. Like we can get that done in about 15 minutes. Let's take that now. <laughs> so out of that came birthday club, which is when my friends became inspired to throw their own birthday orgy and ask their friends for what they were ashamed about. And so it was really my friend who shall remain nameless because uh, I don't have permission to share their name. They declare, they named it Birthday Club. They're, this is inspired by, by Reed. I'm doing this. So we're going to have an orgy with X, Y, and Z. And, and so now I just, I'm passionate about inviting people to consider using your birthday as an excuse. And you can blame me. They're like, I heard this crazy guy on a, on, a, on a podcast. <laughs> to use your birthday as an excuse to invite people to explore sensuality and to ask for what you want. And, and is hence, cake, is there cake and are cupcakes available? Because that's the only way I would want to do I, it. I have had many things at my birthday parties, but 
another friend of mine at their birthday club wanted to bake a chocolate cake to, for their birthday, sit and like sit in it and like do the splashing and then have everybody like smear cake all over each other. The thing that we figured out on that birthday Yeast was infections. don't, no, <laughs> don't, don't make it a chocolate cake. Oh, because it looks it like looks, oh, the it looks photos so look horrible. Oh, oh. oh. it needs to be it food. needs to be birthday cake, like the actual like confetti cake. Those yeah, yeah would like look, do like those a, would read really well. Use like you know use a different frosting than chocolate only yeah. because they sat in it and if you didn't <laughs> know it was a chocolate birthday cake it could, you could look like think mud it was or scat else. play like scat could, play yeah. or mud scat bag gone awry. Awry. it was delicious <laughs> like, yeah. happy birthday that's near your mouth yeah. and that's and, okay and be careful about yeast infections and things like that you know yeah, yeah. that's my first thought i was like if i were to sit on a cake oh my god that'd be a problem but i get yeast infections really easily yeah. so okay so i have a question about this and um well, we have so many questions but <laughs> So the birthday club here, I mean, it sounds awesome already. What are the benefits of this? Like, what do you, when you have this experience yourself or these other people, you know, that are doing this and they're the receivers of it or the creators of it, what are people getting out of this, uh, the birthday club? One of the big things, and, and again, like, I don't want people to turn this into, wow, there's this wonderful idea, but I don't know if my friends can actually handle it because, because your judgment, oh, listeners, of your friends might be that they aren't ready to be invited to a play party yet, right? Like, like maybe you're way ahead of the bell curve with your friends around asking for what you want sexually and and group social sexual explore, exploration and play. So trust your instincts and and learn to uh, to understand. I'm not asking for birthday club because I'm afraid versus. It's probably not appropriate for me to invite my friends to this kind of thing yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the first judgment, <clears throat> the discernment piece. But what you start to get out of it is when you start walking towards your fear and shame in a healthy way, and then start actually using your words to explore and ask for what you want around sexuality and eroticism. Maybe, you know, I want to, I have this fantasy and I kind of want to see if I want it to become real or not. Just having this conversation <clears throat> or sharing this podcast with your friends gets people thinking about what's possible in life in ways that so many of us are shut down. Like so many people fantasize about having a threesome, but are so afraid to ask about it with their partners. And you can, you know, th th I think in, in some friend groups like the idea of hey it's my 30th you know my dirty 30s or it's my 40th birthday like a milestone birthday honey can we have a threesome for my 40th birthday that seems like less of a surprise because my for some reason we give ourselves permission for milestone birthdays for folks who can't see the video i'm air quoting right now <laughs> um but like we give ourselves permission to ask for outrageous things on milestone birthdays which gives us some context to have a conversation that might feel really weird if it just kind of came out of the blue. Like, hey, I would love to have an orgy versus, hey, I would love to have an orgy for my 30th birthday. Mm -hmm. And so how your requests or your thought experiments land on other people, on your friend group, I think we can use our birthdays as an excuse to start a conversation that might feel real out of left field. And then what you're using is you're using that birthday privilege to start a conversation, to get a temperature check of your friends, because you might, they might be thinking and wanting to explore the same things, but they don't know how to start this conversation. They don't know if it's okay to start it with you all. And you can be the person to start the conversation that might lead to you discovering that your friends are a lot more open about sex and fantasies. I mean, even if the birthday orgy never happened, that you're starting to talk about wants, needs, and desires with your friends, that can be a huge shift for a lot of people because now you're giving them permission to also talk to you about their fantasies, whether you ever explore them or not. It's the silence and it's the not talking about things that I think leads to, going back to kind of my mom and dad, leads to the unhealthy stuff eventually. Mm -hmm. So the the Midwestern in me comes comes up a little bit because I'm like, okay, I have this piece. Like, I don't want to ever have sex with my friends, right? Because that's me. And I'm like, 
I would have sex in front of my some of my friends, maybe, right? Me. I've, I've never had, I've never even had sex in front of you or anything. Damn it. And so when I think about folks listening out there that are like, that sounds like a great idea. Would I be judged by my friends? I don't think any of my friends would judge me, but I think they'd be like, that's what you want. Okay. Well, it's, I can just hear some of my like my my besties from the Midwest being like, April, no, that's just I just can't I just can't imagine well, having California orgy. folks. Be yeah, like, they're like, yeah, where is <laughs> the location? Uh, what do I need to bring? So I don't really have a question here. I just I just want to be clear because I know Reed, you'd probably back me on this, but I'll ask you if you do or you don't. This isn't something that you're saying you have to have sex with your friends. You're saying it's an orgy. It can look however you want, or like it a cuddle, 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 or, cuddle, cuddle. It could or be like just playing with feathers. Yeah about yeah about fantasies it doesn't have to necessarily be penetration or you know yeah. watching each other you know ejaculate yeah so 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 when <laughs> that's the clip oh, that's everywhere. the clip for the instagram reel right there <laughs> so also let me preface this like i'm very outrageous and outspoken because part of what i'm doing is i'm modeling wow look at this guy and like people will still sleep with him. Like, how is that even possible? Like, I'm just modeling that you can be this open and people will still love you. And when I talk about dating and relationships, I talk about dating your species. You know, I'm a queer polyamorous slut. I hang out with mostly queer polyamorous sluts. So it's almost like if I was a musician and I was hanging out with other musicians like, and somebody's like, hey, do we do we want to start a drum circle? Like, let's just jam. That's not weird. So when when my friends say, hey, Reed, let's have an orgy or let's have a foursome. I'm like, it's not weird to me. That's your drum because, circle. <laughs> because that's our drum circle, right? Yeah. And I think the lesson here for some people to take away is, wow. And just like what you're saying, April, I don't know that I would be comfortable fucking my friends, which is great. Don't fuck your friends. But I think I'm really curious about having a birthday play party of some sort. What would that need to look like for me to feel safe? In the same ways that when we talk about threesomes, it's like one of the questions I ask when I'm helping people with threesomes is like, do you, would you feel safer having a threesome with strangers or with a friend? Like what, what feels good? And then you start following the safety part for you to figure out what your needs are. and then. A lot of that homework is in, in emotional homework is like kind of wading through the thinking and the feeling to see what actually feels good for you and taking your time rather than, hey, honey, let's go get really drunk. Let's go to Vegas and see, see who we can pick up for a threesome, which is more about avoiding all the difficulty and complexity and trying to have something happen organically, air quotes again. Which seems like it comes with more expectations and complications, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah, you said or can't organically, but I'm like, that sounds complicated. Yeah. Like, and, but we don't talk about sex this way because it already feels impossible. Like, how could I have a threesome with my partner and have it enhance our relationship, not ruin it? Like, mm -hmm. how can I even start the conversation? And so part of the conversation about birthday club is there will be people listening who's like, oh my goodness, like. I can throw an orgy with my friends and then I can trust my friends who don't want to go to it will say no. I can trust that the ones who are curious, they can show up. Like I have a course to help people learn how to throw play parties for their friends because there's some ways to, to stack the deck in everyone's favor that it goes well and doesn't, I mean, it always feels awkward. Hence the embrace the awkward pillow behind me <laughs> on my couch because there's an embrace the awkward formula, which I had to make to make myself feel less awkward about how awkward I feel when people are having threesomes with me. Like most of the tools and the, and, the, and the concepts that I talk about are really just the things I needed to create for myself. The Safer Sex Elevator speech, which I know you've all talked about um, and I'm excited is going to be in your book. Like yeah. that was just what I needed to feel safe and grounded in being promiscuous and having the talk. So what you start to get out of considering having a birthday club, whether you have one or not, is you're giving yourself all this more room and permission to think about and explore what's possible when it comes to sex. And maybe what you explore and figure out is, wow, I don't know, I don't know that I would want to have an orgy on my birthday. 
And that's wonderful. Then don't throw one. But if you're like, huh, what do I want for my birthday? And if I, if you could ask for anything and knew that no one would be mad at you and no one would be hurt or harmed, what would you ask for in bed? What would you ask for in your life? And I just, as a sex and relationship nerd, and because this is my career, <clears throat> I focus that question on sex and helping people with their relationships. So for me, the answer was, if I knew no one would be harmed and, and no one would you know, be angry at me, who I am at my core is I'm usually wanting all my friends piled onto each other, making out <laughs> and fucking each other. And it, and it doesn't have to be sex. Right. Like I use fucking just to kind of the umbrella term, but like so many people are craving, especially after the pandemic, like, I just wish I could get all my friends together and just cuddle and watch a movie together. And maybe your friends want that too, but no one has the courage to talk about it. And maybe they don't have the courage because they're afraid that it'll automatically turn into sex. And, and again, like, you know, I created Cuddle Party to also teach people like you can have a group of adults exploring touch and it doesn't have to turn into an orgy. And the communication skill sets for cuddling are the same for an orgy, really, because you're just drawing the line up at what where everybody wants, you know, to the cruise control to be. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Well, the also the idea of just because we're talking about sex doesn't mean it needs to happen. There's so many different ways to have sex. I'm doing the air quotes. Doesn't you know, need sex to be penetration. Doesn't have to involve right. genitals, and you know, or also like what we talked about. And we're like, okay, let's throw this birthday club thing. And then when you get there, it might be entirely different than what you had talked about before. But at least you talked about all of it. So I mean, that's that's all, that's really important to not go in there with these expectations. Was yeah. like the Bonobo Network's uh, low expectations, high possibilities. Exactly. And Misha, yeah, they both in our show. Love love that. I'm curious though about this. So. Let's talk about play parties, aka sex parties. Mm -hmm. so why is it difficult for a lot of people to find or organize play parties? Like, what's the barriers that are out there? Um, barriers. That's a funny joke. Hey! It's, it's condoms <laughs> and dental dams. Um, yeah. but I'm bumped. Shh. <laughs> so the barriers are often people don't know where to look, and you can't just like Google. Like, I live in in Portland, Oregon. Like Portland orgies. <laughs> like, well, I mean, you sometimes can. something you pops can. up, uh, you know, yeah. but if you don't know where to look or who to ask, then you usually have all the social constraints and cultural constraints telling you, you, you know, you don't go to your PTA meeting and ask around, like, does anyone know where there's a play party happening? <laughs> now you can Google, like, if you know about the lifestyle, you can see if there's a swingers club or BDSM dungeon in your town but not everybody has towns that have those kinds of things so a lot of play parties tend to be underground and so if you're not going to an event space that hosts them or if you're in a small town and you can't travel to a big city or something like that like you don't really know who to ask and so this is where like the bonobo network is a wonderful play party centric community that really values consent and accountability and like, you know, we really need to have each other's backs if we want to have a thriving community around group sexual dynamics and social sexual situations. Like I would advocate and I recommend that a lot of people like check out the Bonobo Network, because even if you're not in on the West Coast and in the Bay, when you know people in that community, they know people and people who like to go to play parties tend to know other people who like to go to play parties. And so you start to like expand your social network. So maybe there is somebody who's hosting a play party in Kansas mm -hmm. somewhere, but you would never know in, until you meet somebody who happens to know, oh, I have a friend in Kansas who throws a birthday club. You mm -hmm. should go check them out. And now we're like vouching for our friends and each other. And there's, there's nothing I like more than getting other people laid by introducing my cool sex positive friends to them. And like that kind of underground slut network where you're vouching for each other and making recommendations because we aren't necessarily the mainstream, even though I think there are a lot more people who are freaky and deaky than we think. But like the challenge is if I ask the wrong person, my reputation in, in my small town might be ruined. 
So like, how do I find people? And then for me as a nerd, how do I find like really quality communities who, who do their play parties with a lot of integrity? I'm very opinionated about how I like to do my play parties, you know, and, but there's so many different ways to throw play parties and host sex parties. I just am very particular about my needs. So mine always have a welcome circle. But that's also because so many of my play parties have people who've never been to a play party before. So it's like white belts and black belts and green belts and blue belts. And so that opening conversation for me is how I get everybody on the same page. But also for me as a host, it's it's the conversation I need to have with everybody so that I feel like it's okay for me to be myself. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of different answers to, to that question that you that you asked. But those are those seem to be the challenges uh, when people start to try to find community for them to start to frolic in. Yeah. Well, okay. So this birthday club, which I love the name birthday club. Okay. (laughs) This is not, or is this like the whole, here's a blowjob for your birthday. Happy fucking birthday. Or is it because you love someone? Is it just, you only get it when it's your special day in your friend group or your partnership. So, you know, why why? What's the occasion for this birthday club? Can it be any any time? Someone's birthday I mean, every day. You could declare, Brit. Like with my friends, I get emails or texts like, "Birthday club happening March whatever," and I'm like, "Great, put me in, put me in the list." It's my friend oh. John Samantha's sister, <laughs> cousin's <laughs> uncle's friend's birthday, and it's time to celebrate. That's how. Right. That. So, so, so think about it like this: like, like, do you do either one of you have a friend who really loves brunches? Oh yeah. Okay. Do those friends sometimes be like, hey, we're having a brunch this Sunday. Everybody meet up at this time at at such and such location. Like if you have a friend who's like, I am the brunch queen of Santa Cruz. And like this Sunday, we're going checking out this restaurant here. And then, you you know, the, the crew, you know, assembles then. Think of think of birthday club kind of like that. All you need is one person to be like, hey, play party birthday club happening here and here are the details what ends up and for some people they're like this is blowing my mind like how do you even well once you get the hang of it and you find a format for your play party that works well for you you know i would invite people to to go check out my workshop on this but like then you just start assembling your friends who like going to air quotes brunch I mean, also, I would, I would also brunch. let people know a brunch play party. It's fucking awesome. That sounds yeah. fabulous. It's Pancakes great. and maple syrup and, and set. mimosa. Yep. Ooh, yeah. I make a deep dish French toast. It's so good. But he's naked wearing an apron. Because <laughs> I'd want to like bang it out and then eat in celebration of like all the calories I burn. Maybe bang, eat, bang, eat. Bang. You know what? There's no wrong way to do this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm eat this French toast. I want off a of playbook. Me. Damn it. Yeah. Well, there is, the- but that's, but April, this is the thing. And this isn't the sales pitch, but like, yes, the playbook <laughs> exists. Yeah. You created a whole thing on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it, I mean, that course is, is called How to Throw a Kick Ass Success, How to Throw a Successful Kick Ass Play Party for Your Friends, the course. Um, whoops. Hit my mic. Oh, the course. Um, <laughs> mic drop. Mic drop. That was a <laughs> mic well, drop. So on, so on that note, though, so yeah. I know we're going to like, you know, lead people to your course. But yeah. what about right now? What are some things that you can share for folks who want to create their own birthday club? Like some top tips and tricks that they can walk away with right now and then maybe do your course later. But like, what are yeah. some top tips? So so the, the, the biggest tip, and this goes for threesomes, orgies across the board, do not try to do it in a way that that a lot of people would call like organic, like don't throw like one of the biggest mistakes is GMO is you, vegan. Yeah. Well, you no, want to like, pump it full of hormones. And shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, what they do is they throw a party wanting it to turn into an orgy, but they don't tell anybody. Oh, oh that's like, that like they're like, would you like more orgy? That's a dry yeah. shot of tequila. Dry by orgy. Would you I'm like not down with that. Tray over here that's well, sitting in the corner. And that's the thing is, is, is yeah, you yeah. have an agenda and you didn't tell anybody so there's now there's no informed consent. People feel like the energy is weird and like, they're like, what's going on? And then like, we're like, you're crossing your fingers, hoping that the jello shots get everybody over the tip. 
over the edge, right? The yes. buttery, the buttery nipples. The, the buttery lime nipples. green jello oh. shots get me every I time my top comes off. Yeah. Yeah. Sex on the beach so and buttery nipples. I know they're actually quite Amazing. good, but you'll get really oh, no, hungover. Everyone's all they get is buttery nipples and blowjob shots, and like, no, and, 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 and some sex on the beach cocktails for later. And everyone's just like right. vomiting everywhere from being too drunk. There's the kind of like we're doing the um, bridesmaid party, like we're doing the bachelorette party in Vegas, and there's a lot of flirting. And we're having fun, but like the unspoken rule is that we're not all going to start fucking, right? But then there's like, you're throwing a party and you want the people to start fucking. What I would do is just tell everybody, I'm throwing a party where after midnight, I'm inviting everybody to start fucking. (laughs) So you can either leave before midnight or stay knowing that it turns into a sex party then. And then at least you're being honest with people and the the fear is my friends will judge me and i get it but also you might have friends who magically stay after midnight but then the next question is well how do you get the party started and my i would recommend you actually have a conversation like a welcome circle where you explain the rules this is how the play party is going to go cuz understand your friends didn't listen to this podcast. They've always wanted to go to an orgy, but no one knows how the fucking orgy starts. So the way that I would start it is like, let's have a conversation. Here are the rules. Let's do some ice breaking exercises. Let's practice saying yes and no, thanking people for saying no, like all these little rules that then all of a sudden your friends start to be like, oh, wait a minute. This is how it works. I can do this. And you set the expectations that it Wait, never Mr. Mahalko, to... can I yep. pose a question? Mr. Mahalko. Um, so you could actually, in theory, because I'm just thinking how I would do that, you could have a proper invitation, like a, a really beautiful invitation with some, you know, emojis of some eggplants <laughs> and you got some, the water flushing emojis on there Smart. and it's like an official one. You could send that and then you could have your, your like rules, quote unquote, laid out. Is that a yep. good idea? Because conversations yeah. can be hard, but you're like, yo, this is my birthday. I get to do it. I, it's my fucking birthday. In, I in get the, to do what I in, want. In, in the course, we actually talk about like... like Emojis? What, well, not emojis. <laughs> yes, emojis. It's all about emojis. I only speak in emojis. Yeah, texts with no punctuation because we're so hip. <laughs> so um, deep. <laughs> but like, what is your invitation? What should it look like? What's the important information to put in it? Like, you might even want to have a pre-invitation that says, hey... I'm thinking about hosting a sexy birthday save the party. Date. Save the date or G invite. Okay. Yeah. But like save the date. And I'm, I'm thinking about throwing a sexy birthday party. So hit reply and tell me if you want to be included in that list. That's smart. Yeah. And then, and then what you're doing is you're encouraging your friends to opt in. And then that way you're also letting your friends know like, Hey, if you're not into this, totally cool. I still love you. Just let me know if you're curious about the sexy party, because I'll send you more information. But like, I'm also dipping my toe in the water here. Yeah, you can be a little bit like non-committal, because maybe you have to test your friends a little bit to see. It's like a doodle poll. (laughs) You're taking a poll. That's so my birthday this year has nothing to do with sexy, but I did I, w- I want to go to the aquarium and then I want to do an escape room. I'm 12. I, I turned 12 basically at 38. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then I, I want to have a that said 12 and then 38. Yeah. Two of them. And yeah. then I want to have a pizza party and, uh, and, a and was, you, you all can come to one or all. But if I wanted to also after that have some sort of sexy party, it would be like, yeah. hey, I'm doing all these things. You can come to any one of them. And if you're interested in the, the thing that happens after 9 p.m., which is a sexy party, let me know. Yeah. And so it's just, you're just adding on this other thing. So it's not saying like you, you know, you're wrong or bad if you don't do it. It's just, it's yeah. available, let me know. And, and you let you give your, your friends permission to opt in. And like, again, you could do this in a similar way. Like, let's say you've never tried mushrooms or something and you want to do that, but you don't know if your friends are hip on that or not. Then you could say, hey, I'm thinking about throwing a psychedelic birthday party. Let me know if you're interested in that. And again, like it's so the approach is how do you give your friends context to opt in when you don't know what they're into or what they're not into, right? And then if you want to throw a psychedelic, sexy birthday party, yeah. you probably invite tell, us. 
does. Hey, hey, well, this, hey, is, this hey. is the problem. Some people like they, they get their friends together. I keep hitting my mic. I apologize. Mic drop. I'm just, yes. Mic drop. <laughs> but like people, like you invite your friends over, then you all do Molly or whatever, and you're hoping that the cuddle puddle turns into something. <laughs> Terrible idea. Yeah, right? not a good one. And again, like, and then everyone wonders why it those those experiences go horribly there's guilt and shame the next day i didn't know i was getting into or, that or, yeah or like people felt like it was weird and pressury because yeah. like you need to be willing to be real and honest with people as a means i mean there's a lot of risk in it right because if your friends do shun you for wanting you know because you're freaky in bed then that hurts more because they actually rejected you for who you really are when you were being vulnerable. And I would add to that, though, like, are those your really close, true friends that would shame and shun you for something that you're not saying they have to do, but is a part yeah. of you? That's just exactly. Feels, yeah. So, and so maybe it's time to find some new friends. Yeah. Well, but but that's really that's really delicate for some people. Totally. Because, yeah, it could shatter your heart. And yeah. and also, like when I when I started realizing I was polyamorous, a lot of my friends left me. Mm -hmm. Now. That, and that hurt because I finally got the courage to be real. And then some of my friends were like, well, fuck this. This is too much. But when I started being more public and everyone has their own setting for what's appropriate to be private or public with, I'm very out in the open because that's the only way that I can be. But some people, you really do have a right to set your privacy settings however you want in your own life. But for me, when I started coming out as polyamorous, some of my friends left me because it was too much for them. But because I was talking about it, then all of a sudden strangers kind of came up to me and they're like, did you say polyamory? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. They're like, you should come sit at my table. There's a bunch <laughs> of friends here that need to meet you. Yeah. And so I started finding new friends who were into and could love me for who I was. Now, all these years later, most of my friends that left me back in the, in the late 90s, They've all come back to me as friends. They're back. They're like, you're way ahead of your time. Now we're all Polly and this is well, wonderful. Some of them, yes. They're like, <laughs> I didn't realize it. But some of them are like, watching you be happy being yourself gave me the courage to actually be myself. And then, oh. you know, they're monogamous or whatever, you know. But I think the best gift you can give your friends, other than trying to be as understanding and compassionate as you can, um, is to be yourself because you're ultimately giving them permission to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to sex and relationships, you figuring out and giving yourself permission to be whoever you are in bed, whether it's birthday clubs or not, me throwing orgies for myself is giving my friends who don't like orgies permission to be whoever they are in their sex lives. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge fucking gift. Mm -hmm. yeah or just well okay so uh, i never want to like have a podcast come to an end when we're talking to read however um i get to hang out with a six summer camp soon, so. you do. by the way everyone I know. Sexy summer camp happens every favorite. summer and is coming up in june and in i'm portland, be there right? in portland, in portland yeah, right outside of portland if i can make yep. it i will hey we're trying to get april to go i think this is might be my fifth one uh, I went yeah. when I was back in Virginia or West Virginia yep. and it's so much fun for folks who want to learn how to so for primarily for folks who are already in the human sexuality field of some yeah. sort I mean that could be like you're an educator you're a therapist you're just wanting to to dive into this field and you're brand new um, yep. and it's incredible it's so much fun it literally is camp sh read wear short shorts with the tall socks and, and, and like, it's like camp on a did you ever watch that show it's yes. Totally, yes, yes it it's reminds totally. me of that vibe and it's not but, like one thing sex toys. Video, Oh, with it's with sex toys, yeah. And we have sponsors like Uber Lube is sponsoring uh the podcast. So he's holding up his bottle right now. Or the not, podcast, not sorry. The, podcast. The, the the camp. And then and the podcast, the but day, the camp. The daytime is all kinds of conferences, um, you know, informational advice, experiences yeah. where you learn how to grow your business, how to grow yourself mm -hmm. as a professional in the human sex sexuality field, even if you're brand new and don't even know you want to be in it, but you think you do. Yep. Uh, and I've learned so much from it. And now I kind of go as like a, a participant slash speaker slash mm -hmm. part of the Uber Lube team sponsor. And it's so much fun. I hope the slip and slide comes back. I'm going to rub Uber. You have the best stories. Some of them have ended up in the book too. 
two good stories that are that are beautiful. Oh, I have one story in the book that changed my yeah my, my libido. You've ev- I feel like every you time you me. go to sex geek go- summer camp, you always come back I'll with t- some life changing. I'll you off, off. I mean, I'm the, you have to order the I'm, book, I'm, folks, if you want to hear the story. I this totally is talked to the list- listeners have heard about it, but like, long story short, I like I had no sex drive for like two years, and at camp I was really closed. My body was really closed off, and then you know, sometimes after hours after the all the talks people might engage but you don't have to some people just go there for the education but there might be like some cuddle puddles or there's some there's a sexy room that people can go and utilize and i had an experience where like you know a pg-13 foursome i call it where someone actually fully like, made it fully clothed no genitals touching um someone actually made out with my armpit and i felt my arousal come back and it stayed turned back on after two years of being just dead and off oh my goodness um and he, he's not promising that that will happen at camp everyone <laughs> no. that was just my experience we created <laughs> amy's doing a whole room now no no that's not happening. Welcome About to armpits. Amy's armpit yeah. room. Amy's armpit it's has has room. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, oh. it's, yeah, really so, wonderful though. What so, you're so, so just because we're all jumping around a lot and giving a lot of information. So Sex Geek Summer Camp, you can go to sexgeeksummercamp.com. That is a business retreat for sex positive entrepreneurs, sex positive professionals, pleasure professionals, however you identify under the umbrella of if you help people with sex and intimacy somehow. But go to sexgeeksummercamp.com to find out if it's the right event for you. It is for, it's a business retreat for us to talk about better ways to make a living. Um, sex whether, educators specifically, yeah. right? Or whether it's, sex whether, it's whether you're a therapist yeah. or cam girl or whatever, like it's, mm-hmm. let's talk about the business okay. behind the business of helping people with their intimacy and their sexuality. And, and Amy, like that you had that experience really warms my heart because the networking and the friendship and the bonding, like it, it's kind of like the joke being, you know, it's like band camp, right? Mm-hmm. You get mm-hmm. a bunch of musicians together and they're having the drum circle, like you're learning new riffs and things and you're getting to be seen and connect in a way that can be hard when you're a sex educator and and you're just surrounded by muggles is what I lovingly yeah. call them. Yeah, um, which are you have to describe that because I didn't know that until Amy said that word muggles. per you. And so would tell everyone else though out there that may or may not know yeah. what muggles so, means. So muggles is 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 just my fun way, even though Harry Potter has it's gotten Harry Potter, yeah. <laughs> by uh what what's their name that you know the author who shall not be named yeah Uh, so basically muggles if you're not a harry potter fan muggles are just regular humans and then wizards and and magic folk are are the other set so as sex educators as people who help people with intimacy professionally i consider us to be like the magic folks who help everybody and then muggles to me, are just non-sex educators. I say that's, civilians. That's, I'm like the civilians. civilians. Yeah, exactly. civilians. Yeah, they're folks that aren't aren't in that world or field, but uh, that get giddy. Is, that get giddy about it though, too. They're yeah. like, oh, yeah. well, talk about and sex. I think a lot of folks can be like, you don't have to be a sex educator to be the magician or the wizard in the sexuality field. Like Absolutely. you're saying, cam girls. There's all these different yeah. different ways that people yeah. can can help or you know do their own uh, create their own offering or just have a desire to spread the good word about sex positivity so Absolutely. i highly recommend going to camp y'all if it's if you're in that field and i'm just going to say this and reed's not saying this but i'm going to say it if you think that this is something you go to just so you could touch bodies and hook up do not oh, come please yeah. because that okay. is not what it's it not is like that. And while like some fun things like Amy's armpits might happen later, it's not a, a pickup or hookup place. And if you come with that intention and I meet you, I, I'll probably like uh, let you know that I'm feeling that intention from you and that doesn't feel good for you. So yeah. Reed, um, bringing it back to birthday club, yes. <laughs> because <laughs> thank you. Yes. Sex Geek Summer Camp, known about it for years. Seems like it's fucking kick ass every year. So um, I'm going to try to make that happen. Um, but bring it back to the birthday club. So you you mentioned earlier and we started to sort of peel back the layer of the how to's of this. And you you already created oh. some some curriculum around this. So I, because I in my brain was going over like all the ways that it could go wrong because mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, but I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. So can you please share with folks not only that piece, but also your other offerings, because you do have a uh, quite a, a wide array of different things that you offer alongside Sex Geek Summer Camp, alongside this uh, birthday club platform. Mm-hmm. And um, and also how uh, folks can find you, work with you if you're still taking on clients. Yeah. Um, please just share with the world more about Reed Mahalko. 
So if you want to go to, so if you want birthday club resources and play party resources, just go to readaboutsex.com, R-E-I-D, aboutsex.com forward slash birthday club. So that'll just jump right to that. And, and then go to readaboutsex.com forward slash calendar to see where like I'm teaching next. Cause the calendar has, you know, if I'm teach like I'll, I'm teaching in Mexico often and there's a retreat or this or that, or I'm, I'm hosting a play party, you know, in Austin soon. Like I travel a lot more now that we're a little bit out of the pandemic. And so go to the readaboutsex.com forward slash calendar, but readaboutsex.com has everything on Instagram. It's readaboutsex uh, for sex geek summer camp. Just Google sex geek summer camp and go to sexgeeksummercamp.com for more. Now you need yeah. to smack your mic because it's a mic. Yeah, now you can really smack, now smack, smack that mic. Smack. Uh, yeah. Do you like uh, it stingy uh, or thuddy, yeah. Mike? Uh, I want it thuddy. I want it thuddy. Yeah. <laughs> you tell that, Mike. You're, uh, you're such an incredible human. Like Reed. It. Oh, my God. I feel like sometimes um, we're just, we're, you and I are cut from the same cloth. We're, we're both like both Labrador. 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 <laughs> active. No, Shih Tzu Pomeranian. Oh, sorry. He's Shih Tzu Pomeranian. No, he's well, a golden retriever on You espresso. start nerding out and then it's like a feedback loop. And now we're more caffeinated. We could do this for like hours and that's why we'll have you back again and again and again. Sure, and again I've learned and again. so much from you over the years and I learned something from you every single time we uh, talk to you. And even when we're off air, um, you're just such an incredible human. So thank you for thank sharing you so much, yeah. this fun topic about birthday club. Birthday club. And um, birthday Reed, club. if you want to talk to me later about any of my ideas for the invitations and what those can look like, you let me know. Cause I have, she's good, at good design. with the design stuff <laughs> and I have so many cool um, ways like a pop out thing. Thing. Okay, so just talk to me about that. I, um, now I really want to know what. Yeah, the yeah she's really good at that. I like, I'm like this I need to up cool. my invitation game. Like, he like is so nice. Also, paper invitations. There's something to say about the the feeling of 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 opening the and envelope then could, and then that. having the the invitation there. So formally. Oh, yeah. Sounds so sexy. Someone with a paper fetish is getting really turned Yeah. Up. All it's right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everyone go check out readaboutsex.com and all of Reed's offerings. And of course, Sex Geek Summer Camp, if you fit that bill. And yeah, I love each and every one of you shameless sex revolutionaries. I love you, my little chippity doo da chippity day. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. So I... Uh, <laughs> and I mean, oh. obviously... You're, you're, you've got your podcast and my my fans and followers are listening. So somehow they found the podcast. But where can my people find you all? We don't know. I, we're I forget. lost. I um, remember. <laughs> where am I? I'm confused. Uh, shamelesssex.com. We're on all the social media platforms. Shameless, Shameless Sex, Sex Podcast. podcast. Yes. So come well. and find us. And then, you know, we will have actually some clips from this on our TikTok and Instagram. Our TikTok changes because we've been kicked off so many times, but and we're cool right now. We're cool right now. Right now. Shameless Sex good. Podcast on TikTok? I think it is. We yeah. don't know. Or just look up Shameless. Look up, yes, we are there like in a, our little decal is us with like topless with a banner over our boobs. So we're not hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. Us. All right. Well, thank you for that, thank Reed. Thank you. Um, and our listeners are like, wow, they've never done that before. But I like yeah, some let's newness. Swap. Uh, <laughs> Turn all right, the everyone. tables. I like if it. If you haven't done so, I just, in one small invitation, go ahead, listen to us on Spotify and give us five stars. You don't mm -hmm. even have to write a review on there because apparently Spotify appreciates just a simple one-click rating. And if you are listening on iTunes, rate us. Give us five stars. You can put an emoji with an eggplant. You can put one of those, one of those juicing emojis and we read every single one we look at every single one you could put an emoji did you ever do you ever remember like those pictorial things where you put them together and you try to sound out what's happening you could do one yeah. of those so it's like a riddle Indeed. I'm going to do that later for you, Amy. Yeah, like hi emoji yeah. hieroglyphics. Yeah. Just, just leave a review and be like uh, Amy and April I love them but that re guy he freaks me out man. Yeah, yeah, but do that all in emoji five stars. Yeah, and five, five stars. stars. Yeah. Five stars. Yes. <laughs> uh, the more ratings that we receive, all that does is help people out there in the world find us more searchably uh, and find people like Reed. And this is a free resource. So all of the advertisers that we have on our show, Amy and I vet, yep. and we believe in the products that they have, whether it's um, an offering that is uh, digital or otherwise or tangible. So... That's all I have for you. And um, I love you. I said that before, but I'll yep. say it again. Mwah. We'll see you next Tuesday, y'all. Right. Bye. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. Ciao for now.